What's up, everybody? Welcome back to this episode of Beers and Breakdowns. Today, we're going to do Seal Team Episode 7. It's a seer related episode. Advanced Oh, that's the seer one? Yeah. Nice. They're filming their last season. Unfortunately, we're that's not going to get to be on it. That's a, Dude, I remember when we started, I watched, started watching that in 2017 when I was still in group and watching Seal Team. And then to sit here with Tyler Gray was so surreal. Was and like even shit. talking to him about it, like I remember the shows that came out and all, and man, it's it crazy. Good things have happened. I am already... Here we go. What's up, guys? Welcome to this episode of Beers and Breakdowns. In this episode, we're doing SEAL Team Episode 7. Season 1. Season 1. Episode <laughs> 7. Season 1. Season 1. Luckily, we're only on Season 1. And honestly, I want to keep reviewing these because they're just so much fun to watch. Yeah. This one is heavily SEER-focused. They go through advanced SEER um, in this episode. And honestly, I don't. After having gone through Seer School, I don't want to have anything to do with advanced Seer. Dude, the, the thought of more Seer School after Seer School is frightening. And terrifying. So for people that don't know, there is more Seer School that you can go through. And there's a, a rolling Seer School. So if you go to, my team got sent down to JRTC in uh, Louisiana. So it's, what is that? Joint, whatever it is. It's a place you go before you go to combat. And it's like you do a mock war. And there was a rolling SEER school that came through. My team got wrapped up. Luckily, I got sent to North Carolina to go to an, a school. So I didn't get rolled up with these dudes. But they all got rolled up and had to go through SEER school number two, basically. What the? In JRTC. It's hilarious. I got pictures. The, the story was my medic had a notebook with all the shit written down. And they said that Jamie, his name was Jamie, was on one side of a picnic bench. And the guy was on the other side. And Jamie's like doing this with him as he's like <laughs> ripping pages out of his notebook and eating them. <laughs> Which if you guys knew Jamie, he's like a, an awesome. elephant in a china shop. He is a big, just big, dumb idiot. And he's just like ripping pages eating out, him? eating the pages. Fucking Jamie, that's <laughs> awesome, bro. Good for you. He took it to the limit. That's but Hilarious. He's like, nah, 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 nah. <laughs> I love that so much because, uh, like, you know, you're getting caught. You're not even trying to pretend like you're not. You just try. Yeah, you're like, just buying time. Buying time. Protect your team as much as possible in the last few seconds. What a gangster ass move! I remember my senior was telling me they were in uh, Colorado because that's where tenth group is, and they they got rolled up like that too, where it was like some kind of uh, random seer event that they weren't expecting, and my senior decides that he's going to evade and it wasn't supposed to be an evade portion. <laughs> so he was like him and I think it was him and our, the senior echo, his best friend were like evading through the middle of winter, Colorado out in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> and it like got life or death They're situation. Like, hey guys, we're just kidding. Come out. He's like, no, 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 <laughs> no, they were gone. They Jeez. left. So they were like in the snow without any snivel gear without anything that they needed, no food, no water, trudging through like feet of snow. Wow. And it got like legitimately, from the stories that they told me, legitimately like life or death situation. Well, that's the thing. Like some of these scenarios and the trainings we go through are so realistic mm -hmm. that there's times where you don't know what's real and what's not. So like Robin Sage, like how we have to wear the Robin Sage bands. If you see pictures of guys in Robin Sage, they have a band around their arm. It clearly says Robin Sage. And that was because years ago, there was an actual incident where a guy got killed by a police officer mm. in North Carolina because the 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 guy going through Robin Sage thought it was a scenario and took off running. And we all have guns in Robin Sage, even though they're rubber duckies, so they're not real guns. The police officer didn't know that there was Robin Sage going on and wound up shooting well, the guy Sage, and killed him. In Sage, we have real guns with the uh, cap tip with the tip at the end yeah, the bfa the, the blank firing bank, adapter. blank firing adapter so we have real guns real m4s we're just real we're just, ak's like yeah, all kind real of guns. ak's so they, they look real as fuck. and if you're a cop and you don't know the military you don't know that the big yellow blank firing adapter that you screw into the tip of the muzzle makes it inoperable yeah. and that that's how you know that it's not um live action but Man, even then like you even see somebody then, raise you see up a gun at pointing you? an m4 at you that's terrifying and yeah somebody got shot so yep. That's so our scenarios that we go through are real life. They are yeah. legitimately like not very different than real life scenarios. And we've talked about before, like things I did in Robin Sage. And then six months later, I'm in Mongolia doing the exact same thing. So it's yeah. so realistic. I ended up in Afghanistan. I felt like in Afghanistan, it was so real compared to Robin Sage that I felt like Afghanistan was fake. Right. Yeah. Like walking into an actual commander's hut, taking my shoes off, sitting down, uh, 
you know, cross-legged. You can't say Indian style anymore because that's offensive. <laughs> It's crisscross applesauce. Crisscross Sean. applesauce <laughs> and drinking tea with commanders talking about the mission and talking mm-hmm. about how we could help them. And I was like, is this f- real? Yeah. Like, is this real? I literally just did this in a fake scenario in Pineland. And now all of a sudden I'm in Afghanistan and this it feels fake. Yeah. Like, this whole thing makes me feel like this is all a big joke because it's so right. representative of. of like, where's the cameras? Yeah, I was like, being graded. Cadre's sitting back there. I was like, are we just talking about a real mission? Are we actually <laughs> going to go on this mission, or am I getting graded right now? Because this seems <laughs> stupid. This seems like school. I think that's like what's so cool about it, though, is it's so realistic. It prepares us so much for the real life thing. And not to continue this tangent further than it needs to go, but that's what makes this episode so valuable is that that advanced seer is that much scarier because the whole point of seer is taking what you think the army is allowed to do to you and taking that to the next level. (laughs) So then you lose. It's very important as a human being to have left and right limits. Right. It it keeps you in boundaries. So when you go to basic, I know the cat, I know that the instructor will not hit me. That's a very important thing. When instructor is getting this close to your face and yelling at you, you say, You think to yourself, he won't hit me. They won't hit you. They won't hit you. You can't touch me. (laughs) So you have all these limits that you put. So you you feel more confident and more comfortable. Yeah. So when you go to SEER school and you say, they won't hit me, and they go, crack. (laughs) And your ears are ringing and you're, (laughs) now all of a sudden that limit that you thought existed goes away. Yeah. So now you have this left limit and then this right limit that you thought was there. And that once it goes away, now it's scary. Because you don't know where they can, now how you, far they could take it. Now you don't know how far to take it, and you don't know where your limits are. Yeah. And that's the important thing, because your tap-out limit could be before or after their limits. And if you don't know where that is, they own you. Yeah. And if you don't think that they're going to own you in SEER school, you are mistaken. I saw people in SEER school that I thought were strong, like studs, get completely broken in SEER school. I watched a dude cry like a little baby. That being said, hour later, let's get into the episode. Yeah. That firm received a ransom video. They don't know she's CIA. My captors want 200,000 US dollars. Her cover is not made to hold up forever. She was only supposed to be down there a couple weeks setting up night. I thought this was a cool scene to talk about because they talked about how her cover was not meant to last forever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And if anybody doesn't know how, this again, something they teach you in SEER school, is if you don't know how that works there's layers of cover right it's like okay hey you have 10 minutes to come up with a plan or a cover story okay so we're a group of guys we're from a football team or a baseball team or whatever um and we're here visiting for training or whatever the fuck Mm -hmm. that's your cover story right well that's a pretty weak cover story so if it's just meant to interact with people at a bar that cover story worked perfectly fine. Right. It's, n- nobody's researching it, looking it up. Right. But then how deep you take that cover story is how much it could um, work against more and more research, how much it'll hold mm-hmm. up against more and more research. So a good cover story, and why she's saying it wasn't meant to last forever, that's where some cover stories would be, is you would have fake documentation to support everything yeah. you're saying. You would have fake pictures online. Fake you would profiles, have fake profiles like, online. That all match up to what you're saying. Right. So it would take years, and she even says it, like a good, a good backstory that is completely uh, ironclad to the best it can be would take years of just connecting the dots and building layers and layers of education. It's not something you just go on and make. Yeah. You have to create a trail of a human existence right. that wasn't there for 35 years. Let's say you're 35, like a, a normal person has 35 years of a snail trail you know, following their entire existence. So they don't have to come up with a cover story. Who's your sister? This is who they are. What's your social security number? This is what it is. Where are you from? This is where I'm from. You have all the answers. Mm-hmm. But if you're trying to make up a fake person, you have to have answers for all those things. And then lies won't work once I go do research. And now we're comparing somebody who could do a Google search to verify versus somebody who, for example, just to say police officer. A police officer now has access to NCIS. Mm-hmm. And the national database for to verify your story, yeah. and you know background checks, background research is like insane lately. Like there's websites out there that I don't even want to tell you 
that police officers are able to use and that the general public is able to use that I could take your phone number and find out every address ever associated with you that you've lived at. And then I could find out your who your family members are based on the address and the associations from those addresses. And then what we'll do is Facebook. Facebook is huge for people doing undercover work and to, for, for trying to figure out who you are because you may have no Facebook presence, but I bet you have a relative who does. Yep. I bet you have an yeah. aunt, and I bet that aunt is connected to your uncle who's connected to your cousin and connected to your brother, connected to your sister, and all of a sudden you think you're being safe, but everybody else is connected around you, and then right. we find you through yeah. Facebook. Yeah. It's the easiest thing. Uh, so all those searches. but So now imagine the depth that you have to have for a real um, fake profile to hold up uh, to all interrogation. So essentially, you're just buying yourself time. A shitty profile is, you know, a couple hours of Google search, and we've blown this to be completely untrue. Right. Yeah. As to where a really good one could last weeks. Right. And then, you know, you have to keep getting people that are more and more skilled at researching to find out. Yeah. So I thought that was a cool point to to talk about and analyze. Like, there's levels to this yeah, stuff. That's a good scene. You guys really need better signage. I've had your compatriots in here, and to a man, one of the first things that they do is ask about the rest of you. You've been in here for 36 minutes. You haven't mentioned your teammates once. I wonder why that is. I don't have any teammates. Okay, it's like I told you. So this is a really good point in SEER school is it's it's really difficult to understand what they're looking for. Mm -hmm. It's like you're trying to game the system, but you don't understand. So you, in your head, you're like, don't tell them any information. So my cover story was that, what was it? We're, fuck, I don't even remember. Probably something something mundane, like we're a, a medic unit or coming to provide some sort of aid. Anything but yeah, being special not, operations. Not special, special operations. So I had my cover story. But so in my head, I was like, don't give them more information. That was the only thing. And then all of a sudden it's like, well, your your buddy is exactly what he's saying. Your teammates are asking about other people. Why aren't, Do you not care about them? Do you not care about the people you came in with? You don't even worry about if they're eating enough or all this stuff, if they have food, if they have water. Like you're only worried about yourself. And it's like, it's very confusing. You're de sleep deprived. You're hungry. Yeah. You haven't eaten for days. Like all this stuff is stacking on you to make your, your mental health like and your mental awareness really limited. And you think don't give them information. And you think that like that's the, the only thing you have to do. Yeah. But then turns out that, wait a minute, I'm supposed to be also I'm supposed to be caring about other people and worrying yeah. about other people and trying to collect food for them and trying to collect information. And you're like, thought I was winning this front. And I'm losing this front at the yeah. same time. Well, I mean, it's all give or take. It's like, how much information do you give? How much do you keep to yourself? What kind of information do you give and all? So it's it's a, like you said, it's tough because you are so depleted of everything. Like yeah. you said, sleep deprived, food deprived, like everything. You're just so beat down. You don't want to get cold, hit again. You're hot. You're <laughs> hungry. You're tired of getting hit. Yeah. And then it's, it's so much. And then you got other interrogators that are really nice to you. And all of a sudden you're not getting hit. So now you're like, maybe I could trust this person. Yeah. Or they'll like give you a piece of information. And you're like, oh, wait, they're actually trying to help me out now. Oh, I. This person's not like the others. They're different. And it's like, it's so mentally, it's so much. You it's have to a, go through so much. It's a total mind. F so if you think you're going to sit in a chair, some guy's going to slap you and say, give me the information. And you're going to be like, no. And they're going to hit you again and be like, give me the information. And be like, no. Yeah. And that's what Sears School is. No. I don't, honestly, I, there's no. no way to win Sears School. Like, no matter what you do, you're always going to do something wrong. And that's the point of it, I think, because you're supposed to learn that it's a lose lose situation. You're just trying to, lose less i guess i don't know mm -hmm. not lose so hard um but yeah it's one of those schools where like afterwards like you're just like i don't know how to feel right now like yeah. i i don't i don't think i did good they said i, did I felt good, like a but, failure dude I yeah feel like, a sure. total failure. like you said looking back at your friend that was doing the thing like you wish you would have done this i've got numerous scenarios where i was like oh i could have done this differently or done this better but everything you do has its own set of consequences and repercussions. Mm -hmm. So no matter what you do, they've already planned for that path. So no yeah. matter what, you're always going to lose out. God, I 
hate that school. <laughs> I want to go back and observe from the yeah. outside and see what really goes into Sears School. <laughs> that is how it feels to drown, Prisoner 1 4. Now, are you ready to have a conversation? <sighs> I'm still kind of thirsty. <laughs> nah, dude. <laughs> the the smart-ass comments, I almost guarantee you are not happening. If yeah. someone's drowning you, and they will drown your ass. Like, <laughs> I, I, think about this. Just in dive school alone, people shallow water blackout all the time. Yeah. And then they bring them back. So they will drown you. <laughs> like, legitimately. <laughs> and that's fine for them. And they'll bring you back, hopefully. <laughs> you could die. And you have to accept that in this situation, you could die. Just like someone going to dive school or someone going to free fall school or someone going yeah. to any of these trainings, airborne school. It happens. It, deaths happen. Frequently. Ranger school people have died. You could die. So this whole idea that technically you're in training and you're safe is wrong. You could die. So coming up from being drowned, from drowning... And being resuscitated or, 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 you know, not fully drowned yet, but and then to have a smart ass comment, I get it's for the show I'm and it makes thirsty. it more interesting. But I promise you all you f tough guys out there that think you're going to have a smart ass comment <laughs> in your school for anyone going to the 18 series route. <laughs> I bet you a paycheck. You will not say anything smart. -ass. <laughs> like, just just please don't do that again. Yeah. Like, that really sucked. I, I I promise you, I don't care how tough you think you are, how funny you think you are, a smart-ass comment is not going to yeah. happen. Because you do not want that smoke. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you, you don't want it. Yeah, and they sure. will bring it. They will bring more than you can handle. Oh, yeah. You don't want You'll it. get all the special attention. Yeah. Mostly making small talk in cafes, just like Jane was doing. <laughs> He's like, please stop like talking. He's <laughs> <laughs> like, can you shoot me? She's not ready for this, Jason. We have time. Like, I don't know a word you said. We have to get her here before they take her to Venezuela and then to Lebanon. <laughs> so, what else is going on with you? Is there a point to that? One? Is there a note here? Was yeah, that was yeah. there one that we can't air? <laughs> I actually thought that was a really like good scene for her. What she said. And she's like, listen. I get it. She's through, been through some seer training, mm. but you need to understand that for us as spooks, once we get through that, we get very, very, very comfortable. Mm -hmm. And I was like, just because she's been through that, she cannot handle this. Yeah, yeah. And I just thought that was a very real thing for her to put in there, and like a very real to life uh, discussion to have. It's like that's kind of like us too. Like we go through seer school in the Q course, and if you don't like anything else, if you don't keep up on refresher training and stuff like that, it's going to be difficult when you're actually put in that right. situation. That's why there are follow on schools and advanced schools and whatnot. So, I mean, I, yeah, it's going to happen to anybody. Yeah. And all honesty, if, if seer school should be done to some level, probably yearly. Yeah. Stay you know, current. To on stay it. current. You got to stay it. current on your language training. Yeah. This so. is probably more important than that. Right. So just as like anything else, you know, at least going through, maybe not being tortured, but maybe being tortured a little bit, but just understanding the tactics and the ideas and the concepts and, and being schooled, um, you know, like a, a good book that a lot of them recommend that I loved reading is Five Years to Freedom. Oh, yeah. Nick Rowe. Yeah, with Nick Rowe. So Nick Rowe. Um, if re be reading, maybe just discussing what Nick went through could be part of that yearly training mm -hmm. because it's just a reminder of just how shitty it could be because Colonel Rowe went through some Hell, bro. Yeah, that's a great book. I yeah. actually really so like that. So if any of you guys want to go Special Forces, check out uh, Five Years of Freedom by Colonel Nick Rowe. You'll, you won't regret it. There you go. 445. Follow the forward position. Light him up, boy. Love that scene. Yeah, that was sick. so dope. It's a nice assault right there on the yeah. objective. And you know, and Tyler Gray's in it, so you know how like how accurate it is and like 
because they just have to keep up with his pace. Mm-hmm. So if Tyler goes in and sets the pace, honestly, for Green Berets, Tyler's pace is too fast. Right. Yeah. We don't move that fast. Yeah. And that's the difference between, you know, tier two and tier one is tier two, Green Berets, we're not typically going for hostage rescue. Right. And so we're not trying to move as quickly as possible to an exact location to extract somebody. We're typically slow and methodical and moving through slow. So our steps and walks as we're shooting is very like a, a just a brisk walk, mm-hmm. trying to, you know, heavy heel to toe, which is all the same things Tyler's doing here, but his pace is very confidently close to running. Yeah. And it, it's a it's a very strange um something that would need to be practiced because it's not natural to walk run like that. It's almost like a marathon. The way I think of it is when I ran ultra marathons. So ultra marathon pace, that's what it's like. It's like a it's like the fastest yeah, walk like quick airborne quick, shuffle. Quick shuffle you could do without running. And so in if I was to, you know, want to jump into a stack with some of these guys, I would really need to practice shooting accurately at that pace yeah. because that's definitely a pace that's too that's faster than what i'm comfortable currently yeah it's like you know when you look at cqb and hostage rescue versus just clearing a house because hostage rescue obviously time is of the essence you got to get in there speed surprise violence of action which is still part of clearing uh like room clearing and stuff but if you're not rescuing somebody time is on your side right you're going to take as much time as you need to comfortably and and cohesively clear that house yeah if you got to rescue somebody you might drop security on some areas you know yeah. smartly and you're going to do it intelligently but you're not going to be as thorough as you know when you're just going through and clearing yeah. and if that doesn't make sense think about it this way hostage rescue you're thinking okay we already have the intel that three rooms back down the hallway and to the right is a hostage the hostage could be right here with a bad mm-hmm. guy pointing a gun at their head and in five four, three, two, whatever they decide, they're going to snap a shot in your hostage's head, and now you've failed your mission. Right. So instead of slowly, methodically clearing, we need to get to that room fast. Right. Not any other room, that room. So we may pass all the doors, all these threats, and just run uh, right to that room. But then we're going to kill that guy with the gun to her head, save our hostage, and then we could take a tactical pause Mm -hmm. and back clear out with our hostage safely and get out of there. You're not going to bypass rooms if you're just clearing a house. No. You're going to slow, and you're going to own the whole thing, so that way you're moving in phase lines, and then everything behind you, ideally, is cleared and safe. Yeah. So I just really, when I watched this, I saw Tyler's pace going through there, and first of all, it just looks so good, the way Mm -hmm. he's moving and and how quick he is. And I know that those uh, CAG bros are going to be able to shoot, you know, like dime holes at that pace. And you would just have to understand that that's going to take a lot of training, and you're going to have to focus on that and moving that quickly and and shooting um, insanely accurate. Because at the end of the day, again, hostage rescue, you need to be able to shoot the dude right here in the face when he potentially has your hostage right here holding a yeah. gun to him while him running at that running shuffle. Yeah. And that is extremely difficult. Very, very much so. Yeah. So very cool. Another banger of an episode from SEAL Team. Um, I love this show. Tyler's a great dude, close friend of ours. We really enjoy uh, spending time with him and talking to him. Um, and we will be having him back on the show. Uh, right now, he's currently filming the last season of SEAL Team. Just got off the phone with him earlier. Um, they're going to go to another country uh, here in the next uh, couple of days. I think they're leaving to head out to another country to film the last episode. Once, oh. once he gets back, we'll link up with him um, and probably review some more episodes of SEAL Team with Tyler. And then we also have to pick his brain for some business stuff because uh, uh, he's going to be helping us um, you know, take our business to the next level because he's just an awesome dude. And in the, the veteran community, not everyone is so um, eager to help other veterans. It's a very yeah. cutthroat business. Uh, but Tyler is one of those people that if you are a good person and just want you know to do right by him, he will do right by you. So shout out to Tyler. You're an awesome dude. We appreciate you, man. Uh, and we'll see you guys on the next episode. Peace.